Across the EU, it's lights out for the good old incandescent bulb. Since September 1st, even 40 and 25 watt bulbs are off the market. The EU has pushed through energy efficient lights, mainly the compact fluorescent models known as CFLs, but they leave much to be desired. These energy-efficient bulbs emit very poor light. It's not bright, it's diffuse. That means the color rendering is awful. And CFLs contain a highly hazardous metal, mercury. This bulb poses a grave danger if it breaks. The mercury vaporizes and gets into the lungs within seconds. Critics warn they even emit toxic substances in normal use. If a simple instrument like this can register poisons and contaminants emitted from these bulbs, that means there's a serious problem. It indicates the presence of hazardous toxins. It's universally agreed that the new bulbs use less electricity and last longer. But critics say consumers and the environment will pay a high price for these benefits. At the Volksdorf Kindergarten in Hamburg, Instructors are using a playful method to teach four to six-year-olds about both kinds of lights. The old incandescent bulbs and the new energy-efficient models. And this is the new model. Of course, it looks different than the bulbs you've drawn. There's the spiral version and the tubular shapes. You probably see them in light fixtures at home, don't you? My mom doesn't buy them because when you turn them on, it always takes a while. And by the time it's lit up, you've already washed and dried your hands, then you're out of the bathroom. Zilke Stoltenberg wants to teach the children what to do in case one of the new bulbs shatters. So if this energy-efficient bulb drops, you have to leave the room immediately. So let's run a drill. Remember, there's poison inside. We're only practicing now, but if it drops and breaks, you have to run for the door, okay? So, I'll pretend to drop it, it breaks, and now you have to hurry outside. The official recommendation from the Federal Environment Agency is to evacuate for 15 minutes, leave the windows open, turn off the heat. To find out if those precautions are justified, we turn to an independent laboratory that analyzes environmentally hazardous materials, including mercury. And the researchers take all precautions for our test. Here's a protective mask. Just pull it over your head. Laboratory head Gary Turner says there's only one sensible reaction when a CFL bulb shatters. You should get away as quickly as possible. It could enter your bloodstream through the lungs and from there enter the brain. Or through the olfactory nerves directly into the nervous system. That's why we take these safety precautions. The measures include a fume hood, breathing masks and gloves. As soon as the glass breaks, an invisible cloud of mercury is released from the bulb we can see the electronic components. Cerner is highly critical of the use of mercury in this kind of product. Every encounter with mercury makes you a bit more stupid and lowers your IQ. It is a highly dangerous nerve poison and can also affect many other organs and the immune system. There should be a zero tolerance policy for mercury. We must do all we can to institute a worldwide ban against mining, production and distribution. Environmental medical specialist Joachim Mutter has worked for years with patients suffering from mercury poisoning. He's regularly asked to testify in civil court cases. Recently, he encountered a youngster who suffered severe injury after a low-energy bulb shattered. The boy was already ill at the time, and the parents had no idea just how dangerous the mercury cloud was. They didn't air out the room and the shards were thrown in the garbage. The child then slept in his bedroom. Within the first week he developed a skin rash. By week two he began losing hair. He developed severe diarrhea and a visible case of the shakes. He showed what I describe as autistic tics. He was withdrawn, lost interest and was constantly tired. 
He slept all the time and was lethargic. Nothing like the boy he was before. After extensive therapy, he's slowly regaining his health and vitality. That's precisely the kind of accident the instructors at the Volksdorf Kindergarten are trying to prevent. Silke Stoltenberg uses a demonstration bulb to show the children how to safely dispose of them in accordance with the government's environmental guidelines. I use cardboard to gather all the pieces and put them in here. Your mom and dad can do that too. I collect the big pieces in the cardboard and use tape to gather the rest. Then I press down on it to get every little piece. We're not allowed to use a vacuum. And a broom isn't advised because it would only spread the mercury all around. Then I take off the gloves and dispose of them too. There might be hazardous material clinging to them. So, now I shut the lid tight and we'll recycle it. Light bulbs filled with toxic metal. Not what most people would call progress. We visit a lighting designer in Hamburg. Katja Winkelmann is an engineer and knows a thing or two about the business. The problem with this form of technology is that it simply doesn't work without mercury. That's true of all bulbs of this sort. And that includes these tubular models, the fluorescent lights. It's the same for the compact CFL bulbs, the energy efficient bulbs. None of these can function without mercury. That's simply based on the technology in use. EU guidelines allow up to 5 million milligrams of mercury per bulb. That's about the size of the head of a pin. In addition, the base is filled with complex electronics, with up to 30 individual parts made of silicon, phosphorus or aluminum. These bulbs are built with this electronic ballast. We've taken this one apart to show you. The mercury is still inside because we haven't broken this casing. But we can clearly see the intricate electronics involved. And of course this has to be disposed of in an eco-friendly manner. Every time we recycle, we throw away these electronic components too. And that's crazy, because first the mercury has to be dealt with, and then a whole lot of electronic waste. Most energy-efficient CFLs are produced in Asia, particularly China. There are reports that employees at some Chinese plants have suffered from mercury poisoning. We contacted investigative labor activists there. I heard that Chinese workers got poisoned by mercury while producing. Is there a way to find out what happened to the workers? At great personal risk, a member is to go undercover with a hidden camera in an attempt to document working conditions at the plant. <laughs> We're willing to take the risk. If we can prove the rumors are true, perhaps we can force a change in labor conditions at those facilities. Gary Zerner has begun a new test with six CFL models produced by five different manufacturers. He's studying whether intact energy efficient bulbs might also pose health risks once the lamps are on the surrounding air is collected, chemically bonded and analyzed. This is an extract from the air sample that we've sucked into the tube. Now we'll use gas chromatography, mass spectrometry to find out what substances it contains. This method reveals that there are various substances. They're all volatile organic compounds. We've even found measurable traces of the toxin phenol. What's the problem with phenol? Phenol is carcinogenic and is considered a health hazard. We also found tetrahydrofuran, which may also cause cancer. There are others as well. Alkyl benzenes, which can damage the nervous system and are toxic to the liver and so on. The worst thing is that you have an entire cocktail of substances linked with various health risks. That is a particular concern. 
But Germany's Environment Agency says the concentration of emissions is not high enough to be a significant health risk. We consult Wolfgang Maes, a recognized authority in building biology and environmental analytics. We want to find out exactly how the toxins are emitted. Did they escape from the base or from the glass housing? We can give this simple instrument a try. It's a sampling probe, fairly insensitive and not very accurate. We can see whether the emissions are coming from these scratches that lead to the ballast, as I suspect, once the bulb has reached a certain temperature. Listen to that. It's the same with the other slits. Look at how that follows the glass housing. So if toxins such as phenol are escaping from this bulb, why aren't they better sealed? It must be possible from a manufacturing standpoint. You'll have to ask the producers. It's a necessity no matter how high the cost. We're talking about poisons that should not be allowed to escape. If such a simple instrument can detect poisons and contaminants emitted by CFLs, then we truly have a problem. I'm talking about biologically hazardous emissions. We ask manufacturers to comment. One of them responds. As a manufacturer of high-quality brands, Osram complies with all manufacturing standards and guidelines. In addition, we conduct internal and external inspections on a regular basis. Mace has also measured the amount of electrosmog produced by the CFLs. So I turn off the energy-efficient bulb and replace it with a filament bulb. Look at the field intensity on the display. You can see for yourself that the traditional light bulb gets better results. It's a much healthier choice than the energy efficient model. In particular, this lamp produces a field whose strength is 42 volts per meter. The limit for a computer workplace is just one volt per meter. That means that this bulb is 42 times more intense than a personal computer is allowed to be. We found CFLs that produce over 70 volts per meter, 70 times higher than a PC. What kind of health problems could arise if I sit too close to an energy-efficient lamp, for instance, at a desk? From a biological standpoint, there's dangerous electromagnetic exposure to your head, your body, your entire work environment. That can lead to neurological and hormonal problems and to cell damage. These are all things that can be triggered by high electromagnetic field intensity. Here in a typical German residential area, we want to find out how consumers are accepting energy efficient bulbs. The first family has only a few CFLs used where they won't be noticed. We use normal bulbs here in the living room. The CFLs are so ugly they destroy the look of our chandelier. Family number two has designer lighting with the appropriate bulbs. Halogen bulbs? We use mostly floodlights. The one exception is the fluorescent tube in the kitchen. I installed it over the sink. The family has decided to install energy-saving bulbs only in certain areas. We replaced the bulbs on this ceiling lamp. The CFLs make sense because this lamp is on for lengthy periods. Family number three has just moved into a new house and has bought new furnishings. Most of the lamps have CFLs. Are you worried about sleeping next to a bulb that contains mercury? Have you even thought about that? To tell you the truth, it hadn't crossed my mind, but as long as the mercury is contained in the glass housing, it won't leak out. The anecdotal evidence from three homes, only 37% energy efficient bulbs. The rest is a mix of incandescent, halogen and fluorescent. Family number four was initially excited about the prospect of saving energy and costs. The enthusiasm didn't last long. 
This is my collection of energy efficient bulbs. I tried them all and we didn't like them. So they all ended up in the basement. This is our supply of incandescent bulbs for use around the house. They just don't produce the kind of light we want. We can't use dimmers. And we've been reading about the dangers as well. They're supposed to be environmentally friendly, and yet they contain mercury. Sorry, we just can't grasp that concept. The European Union enacted the legislation on energy-efficient bulbs back in 2009. Early on, European Parliament member Holger Kramer voiced skepticism and pointed out the possible adverse effects for consumers. It's clear that health concerns were simply not a factor in implementing the ban on incandescent bulbs and the pressure to market energy-efficient bulbs. The EU Commission admitted as much. At the time, there had been no comprehensive studies. It wasn't just about mercury. There were also concerns about the psychological effects of the light, among other things. But didn't the EU Commission carry out extensive testing? We asked Commissioner for Energy, Günther Oettinger, to comment. He refused, sending a spokesperson in his stead. Were studies done on possible adverse effects of CFLs prior to the incandescent bulb ban? Before we began taking light bulbs off the market, we investigated the problem of mercury in the energy-efficient bulbs. We asked some of the independent scientists on our advisory council, and they indicated there was no risk from the amount of mercury contained in the new energy-saving lights. One day later, she sent a correction. In an email, she wrote that extensive test results were only submitted in 2010, long after the phase-out went into effect. In a 2009 study, researchers looked at just five different CFLs. That was the minimum requirement. So why the urgent decision to ban filament bulbs and replace them with CFLs? It was at the height of the climate debate. It started in Australia and spread around the globe. Everyone was unscrewing light bulbs and no one wanted to be left behind, including Chancellor Angela Merkel. There was no stopping it. Incandescent bulbs had to be banned to save the world. The EU Commission appointed a committee to set guidelines for the energy-efficient bulbs. It included industry experts along with representatives of consumer groups. Why were producers such as Philips and Osram at the table? It's all about who knows whom, the buddy system. The bureaucrats in the EU Commission have circles of friends. They network. And when it comes to a decision on some issue, they invite those who might be affected by it to meet. And it has to be clear that environmental concerns aren't necessarily the highest priority. Rather, these decisions are heavily influenced by the respective business interests. There's no profit in the incandescent bulb, perhaps just a few cents. The profit margin is much higher for CFLs. That's why business interests trumped environmental concerns in coming to this decision. Proponents point out that the energy-efficient lamps truly do save electricity and have a much longer lifespan. But is that truly the case? In Frankfurt, we visit the offices of popular German consumer magazine Ökotest. It's done extensive research into CFLs. Editor-in-Chief Jürgen Stelpflug and his team studied 16 different models to find out whether they live up to manufacturers' claims. Here they claim that this 11-watt CFL bulb can replace a 60-watt filament bulb. That's simply not enough. Our findings indicate you'd need at least 14 watts. But the CFLs also lose brightness quickly. So actually, you'd need a 21-watt energy-efficient lamp to replace an old 60-watt bulb. And the lifespan? Yes, this is the lifespan. According to this, one low-energy bulb lasts longer than eight traditional bulbs. The manufacturer is required to print this information on the packaging. It just doesn't add up. Yes, they're required to, but no officials check to see if it's true. 
But this laboratory in Wilhelmshaven does. Electrical engineer Wolfgang Herte and the staff at the Prüfzentrum Technik have been testing lights for years, commissioned by consumer protection groups. That includes tests on the true lifespan of energy-saving lights. This room contains more than 100 lamps from 36 manufacturers. On average, they should burn between 8 and 10,000 hours. We're performing a longevity test here. We're at 7,000 hours, and 30% of them have burned out. That's a lot. In addition, we have a row where the lights are regularly turned off and on. It's rigged so that they're on for one minute, and then off for five. And the test runs around the clock. The first bulbs expired at the 3,000-hour mark. And you can tell by these dark spots that a lamp is about to burn out. In a bathroom, families turn the light on and off at least 10 times a day. So a CFL probably wouldn't last a year. We asked Germany's largest light bulb producer to explain the apparent discrepancy. Asram answered by email. We are Germany's only manufacturer to guarantee our energy-efficient bulbs. This guarantee also applies particularly to the lifespan. In the meantime, we've re-established contact with the Chinese labor activists. They've been able to place one of their members inside an assembly plant at the Foshan Electrical and Lighting Company. This facility produces fluorescent lights which operate on the same principle as CFLs. The key component is mercury. Heinrich Kramer is a lighting designer, previously employed by a major manufacturer. He speaks with authority about the images from the Chinese plant. The employees aren't wearing protective gear. They should be wearing breathing masks and the appropriate protective clothing. And it should be disposed of once they leave the production line. If one of these tubes breaks, highly toxic mercury will escape. Chinese regulations stipulate protective clothing, but it appears few employees are aware of the health hazards. Over the past few years, there have been numerous documented cases of toxic accidents, including at this plant. Under these conditions, can we call these lamps environmentally friendly? Certainly not when you look at it from this standpoint. They do consume less electricity. But no one sees the environmental damage caused by mercury. It's even more outrageous given the widespread knowledge that mercury is highly toxic for the environment. So special EU exemptions were put into effect to make CFLs available to consumers. The guidelines are far stricter for all other instruments. Mercury thermometers are banned. But there are special guidelines for fluorescent tubes and CFLs. So these energy-efficient bulbs will continue to pollute the environment. In 2004, German light manufacturer Osram bought a stake in the Foshan Electrical and Lighting Company. In a statement, Osram declares, with the goal of improving occupational safety and health, Osram successfully implemented these and other measures in 2010. Use of modern dosing technologies, weekly mercury monitoring, construction of new ventilation and exhaust mechanisms. And then there is the problem of disposing of the burned out bulbs. Germany forbids throwing them away with the rest of the household trash. We go to a building supply center to see whether it has a recycling program in place. It doesn't appear to be the case. Excuse me, I'd like to recycle this bulb. Sorry, I can't help you. I don't think we accept them. There was nothing in the light department. We don't accept them. But I bought it here. That doesn't matter. The only alternative is a trip to the recycling center. On the way, my car burned nearly a liter of gas and emitted over 2,000 grams of CO2. All to dispose of one eco-friendly light bulb.
Waste separation actually works quite efficiently in environmentally conscious Germany, but the CFLs pose a gigantic recycling problem. Recycling centers are required to accept them, but experts estimate that only about 10% of CFLs from German households are properly disposed of. That means 90% are thrown out with the trash, ending up in landfills and posing an environmental hazard. But surely the EU Commission has imposed recycling guidelines. Bureaucrats in Brussels have regulated almost every aspect of our lives. But the spokesperson for the EU Energy Commissioner couldn't find the laws applying to recycling of CFLs. As far as recycling is concerned, stores that sell the bulbs must also take the used ones back. But they don't. They have to. The stores have to take them back. Take CFLs back for recycling. The stores refuse and say they're not required to. You can't dispose of the burned out bulbs at the place you bought them. The law stipulates that the stores must accept them. The law also says that member nations must inform its citizens where and how to dispose of these bulbs. Of course, that includes Germany and German citizens. Wo und wie sie diese Lampen abgeben. The spokesperson for the EU Energy Commissioner is wrong. Mrs. Holzner corrects her statement the day following our interview. Stores may recycle the bulbs on a voluntary basis. Light designers are developing bulbs that work without mercury. At the Unilever house in Hamburg, LEDs and natural lighting are part of a progressive energy efficient concept. It's an expensive solution. At a cost of 30 to 40 euros per bulb, LEDs are beyond the price range of many families. But they do last up to five times longer than CFLs. These LEDs are a very effective and energy efficient way of generating light. The major advantage is that LEDs emit maximum light at the flip of a switch. That's my major complaint with CFLs. You can fall down the stairs because there's no light. LEDs solve that problem. They're a good alternative. But if LEDs are too expensive and CFLs too dangerous, there's little choice left. This lighting shop in Hamburg recognized a business opportunity, ordering and hoarding thousands of traditional bulbs. Stefan Schrader expects to be doing a booming business. Look at this bulb, it's beautiful. I have about a thousand in this style. And how many bulbs in all? One or two million at least. On September 1st, Europe bade farewell to the incandescent bulb. Consumers have stocked up and demand for CFLs is moderate at best. A potentially toxic product that simply doesn't live up to the hype. <laughs>